I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This piano we just brought in uh, yesterday. And uh, it belongs to a, uh, a couple who, who are retiring. They, they've had this piano. This is a family piano. Um, and they've had it for many decades. It's gone through the generations. And, um, and now they're, they're retiring and moving um, to St. George, as a retired couple should. And, uh, and as part of that, they have time now to to enjoy the pian to play the piano and, and enjoy enjoy this instrument. However, it just needs it needs some work. So it's a, it's a very very small piano you know, built in 1929. Very small Wurlitzer. It's it's um, they they call it the the spinet, which of course I'm used to thinking of a spinet as as this kind of piano. You know, an upright that's about three feet tall, that's what I call a spinet, but um, Wurlitzer referred to this grand spinet. Um, Kimball did something that's not only kind of similar where they have they have the La Petite, which is the, the Kimball version of a really, really, really small grand, and so that's, that's what this is. So we're going to be doing um, some refinishing on it. Uh, of course, it's um, finish-wise, it's pretty rough which you would expect for 1929. Um, looks like a, I don't know, a flower pot, maybe, right there. Just you know, very scratched up, which, oh, this is kind of cool. You can see the majority of Piano's life. So this, this, this has been flipped over. So that's what the finish originally looked like, more or less. It's still scratched up, but that's a pretty, pretty big difference. It's, it's unusual in that it has six legs rather than three. That's, that's fairly unusual. The keys, the keys were actually redone in 1960. There's a piano technician who, who did it that wrote his name on the inside, and he wrote the date, and that was 1960 that he redid these. It, it looks like a, frankly, I would give his job probably a C or a C minus. My, and and the, the lady who owns this piano, she told me that she remembers when her parents did that. Um, and she remembers that the original ivory was, was in pretty poor condition, all chipped up. So that's, I guess it lasted, what, about 31 years before, before it chipped up and, and they had to be redone. So, It'll be it'll be good to get get those keys redone and, and do a not a C job but an A plus job. That's the that's the what's coming for this piano. And then of course <clears throat> everything here on the inside it just is what you'd expect for uh, what ninety one years. It's um, just in. Very, it's worn. We're, we're not going to be doing a full rebuild on this one, where we where we redo the soundboard and bridges and strings and everything. But but we're we're going to a pretty significant extent. So it'll be a dramatic improvement. Let's see if we can get a. Let me see if we uh, those hammers down there. We are going to be replacing the hammer. So let's get a. A shot of those. See, there's, everything is original in there, which is kind of cool. I mean, to think that something this old, 91 years old, can still function. I mean, reasonably well. It it definitely definitely needs you know significant amount of work, but. Uh, and even the fact that it's even kind of functional after 91 years is, is a big deal. So it's kind of a very small sound. I'll be interested to, to hear what, um, what refurbishing and putting on new hammers and regulating everything, how it will change the sound.
functioning correctly, we'll replace, uh, we'll replace the shanks, the knuckles, flanges, um, hammers, um, and then a number of other parts, obviously fountain leather throughout, keys, sharps. It's gonna, and then of course refinishing, it's gonna look good and it's gonna, it's gonna play really well. I think uh, as well, if not better, hopefully better than, than it played in 1929, that's the goal.